Hello, and welcome back to my basement. I'm glad you decided to tune in. I haven't seen you for a while, but that's besides the point because today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. That is home video. If you were a consumer of movies before the 1970s, there was really only one real way of watching a movie, and that was, of course, to go to a physical theater. Now, you'd have to go to this theater at the time you wanted to watch the movie, buy a physical ticket to watch your movie, and then give it to the guy and be like, oh, I'm going to watch the movie now. Now, what if you wanted to watch a movie at your home? Well, there was television. You could watch television programs on here, a little different from movies, and sometimes in certain networks, depending on what decade we're talking about, they would air movies on TV, of course heavily edited movies, taking out the spicy bits that people found not suitable for television. But again, before the 1970s, there was no way to record these programs. You have to watch them live when they're airing. And that's a certain time. You have to set aside time in your day to watch them. And I guess as early as 1924, you could buy 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter film. They would cut together different animated shorts and put them on one reel. But again, these were shorts, not full movies, not really something you'd watch in theaters. And unless you knew someone who had a 35 millimeter film projector and someone who could get their hands on an actual film reel actual copy of an actual film distributed by the actual film distribution company. And usually you have to own a movie theater to get your hand to some one of these. Unless you had a buddy who owned a movie theater, you wouldn't be able to watch films in the comfort of your own home. You weren't able to record things from your television pre-1970. But I did exclude a crucial detail. Post-1970, there was one invention that allowed for this. In the early 1970s, the videotape cassette was born. Of course, it used videotape, which was used to broadcast television shows, but in a compact cassette format, which was much easier to use than big, bulky reels of tape. Many companies saw this as a perfect product to introduce to the general public. Two companies in particular, JVC and Sony, jumped at the idea and created the VHS and Betamax tape, respectively. These two tape formats launched a format war with each other. Consumers found these as the perfect way to record television shows. They could hold a lot of footage on them. Usually four hours was the standard. Perfect for Americans to record their favorite football games. You set a time and a channel for the player to record, insert an empty cassette, and it would record that. You no longer have to carry the burden of not being allowed to watch your favorite football game on time. It isn't the real American dream being allowed to watch your favorite football game on time. And these beta tapes and these VHS tapes had a little bit of a rivalry going on in the 1970s for which one was a better format. Which one won? Well, there was many factors that went into purchasing a compact cassette tape in the 1970s when there wasn't yet a clear winner for which one was the better format. Now, let's run down the two sides of the equation. Now, on launch in 1976 for VHS and 1975 for Betamax, they were both very expensive, around $4,200 adjusted for inflation. Now, that's expensive, but then again, these are very desirable products. Remember, football games, everyone wants to watch them, but no one has enough time to. So. People wanted these products, but which one to get? Well, you would think the Betamax was on the market first, so it probably had more sales right off the bat. But Sony, who made the Betamax tape, and JVC, who made the VHS tape, had two kind of different stances on who would manufacture machines to play these tapes. You have JVC, who is more willing to let other companies manufacture machines or players for them. Sony, however, kind of wanted to keep the Betamax players exclusive. I mean, there were some models manufactured by other companies, but not as many as there were with VHS. 
Now, which one was more efficient at what it did? Which one could do more things? They are both kind of on equal playing fields when they were first released. There was a lot of features that Betamax had that VHSs did not have, but eventually VHS caught up to these features. Also, people said originally Betamax had better video quality as the technology of VHS progressed. This quality difference became less and less noticeable to the point where it didn't even matter anymore. Also, VHS tapes had longer recording times. Later on, VHS got to recording times of six hours. So by the 1980s, there was a clear winner. People wanted VHS and they wanted them now. So a lot of them were produced. I mean, a lot. Due to the sheer amount of VHS players in the average family's home, movie studios had a new and marvelous idea. Let's take these VHS tapes and pre-record something on them. The newest movie. It's been in theaters, it's out of theaters, now it's on VHS. You go to the store, you buy it. And now that you've bought it, you can watch it at home on the VHS player that's already in your house because you use it to record your favorite football game. And if there's anything a man loves more than his football game, it's nothing. But a close second would be his movies, his patriotic movies, and he needs to buy his movies. Now there's an easy way to, since movie studios now put movies directly onto tapes. And they were a hit. People bought them, like a lot of them. And many companies jumped on the bandwagon of releasing their movies on to home video. Another thing that sprung up besides just buying your movies were movie rental services, locations where you would go and rent a movie. But there was another way to watch movies at home, other types of home media, other formats. There was one specific format that was a lot bigger. And I don't mean bigger in popularity. I mean bigger in size. Everyone talks about how tapes reigned supreme in the 80s and 90s and were replaced by discs in the late 90s and 2000s. But tapes were not the first to try at home video. There's a long history of home video stretching back before the tapes. In fact, around the same time as these compact cassette tapes were being created, multiple companies had an idea for a different type of home video format, and that was a video disc. One of these companies was RCA. This is a vinyl record. These babies were the surefire way to listen to music for a really long time. Sure, you had radio, but since the 1880s, these were the one and only way to listen to music in the comfort of your own home. In the 1960s, a few companies thought, what if you could watch movies on vinyl records? One of these companies was RCA, and they started their journey into making movies available on vinyl records all the way back in 1964. It took them 17 years to do this, but, you know, they did it. In 1981, these discs were finally released. They were similar to records. They were made out of vinyl and read by a needle, but they were a bit different. The grooves were smaller, and the needle did not read vibrations like it would in a vinyl record that plays music, but instead electrical signals. The technology was overall more complicated, and these discs were not made to be taken out of their plastic cases. It was expected that by 1985, over 50% of homes would own a CED player, but um, RCA kind of shot themselves in the foot because they marketed their CEDs under a Selectivision line, but RCA also produced many VCRs, which were also a part of the Selectivision line. Speaking of VCRs, many people already had those in their homes, so home video on VHS made sense. But with CED, people had to buy a very, very expensive player, and by this point, VCRs were already becoming cheaper and more available, and at the same time, another disc technology called Laserdisc was also released over three years before, and was more reliable using a laser instead of a needle. These lasted for over 20 years, and were the number one home video choice for movie buff 
groups and collectors. CED, however, was not so lucky. By 1984, CED players were discontinued, but up until 1986, they kept producing discs. So the discs last for five years. BHS kept growing in popularity steadily. Into the 1990s, there were more and more and more companies trying to put their movies on VHS. Not even movie studios. There is like exercise tutorials on VHS and other random stuff on VHS that nobody cared about. People put their like school lectures on VHS and sold them for a price or something. A lot of movie studios even just made sequels to their films and put them directly onto VHS just to make a quick buck. VHS was extremely popular. So popular. But we don't use them anymore. Why is that? Well, in the 1990s, a new format reigned supreme. And this time, it was a disc. The digital versatile disc, or more commonly known by the general public as the DVD, is a digital disc that reads information with a red laser. They were released to the public in 1996. The first major releases on DVD were from Warner Home Video. They were Assassins, Blade Runner, Eraser, and a Fugitive. Many other companies were quick to follow. These discs were very desirable to people due to higher video and sound quality. They were longer lasting and they were interactive, allowing people to watch bonus features, change languages, and even play games. In contrast to VHS, which could not do any of these things. Interactivity was actually a feature on Laserdisc that many consumers found interesting. A large number of DVDs were sold, and due to the technology not being too expensive, many players were as well. These discs were not only great for movies, but for storing other types of data. Actually, many video game console manufacturers looked at implementing this DVD technology because of just how popular it was becoming. Soon enough, in the year 2000, Sony actually implemented DVD technology into their video game console, the PlayStation 2. And because of this, many movie watchers bought a PS2 just to watch movies. This was great for Sony. They got a whole lot of sales of the PlayStation 2 just because people wanted to watch DVDs at an affordable price. It was great for the consumer too because the PS2 was a lot, and I mean a lot cheaper than a lot of other DVD players at the time. This also worked out for PlayStation 2 players, people who played PS2 games, because they were now introduced to the new DVD format. So it was a real win-win for everybody. But that's it for the PS2. This video isn't about the PS2. It's about home video. And the new home video format in town was the DVD. In 2003, it outsold VHS for the first time ever. And by the mid-2000s, major movie studios stopped producing films on VHS altogether. You know something about DVDs? They're only standard definition. Why do you want to watch a movie in high definition? Well, do I have the format for you? Home video formats weren't the only thing that was evolving at a rapid rate. All tech was. Pretty much everything from your car to your television was constantly changing. In the 2000s and early 2010s, this was a golden era for new tech. I want to tell you about how the new fancy high definition televisions made way for a new type of disc. And that is the HD DVD. Now, this would normally be part of the video where I pulled up said disc, but I do not have an HD DVD. Why is that? Well, because they don't exist anymore. Not because we don't have high definition discs. We do. We have plenty of them. Just not HD DVD. There was another format that actually took over HD DVD's place or the place that it would have had. That's right. Another format war. Yes, between the Blu-ray, which I do have right here, and the HD DVD, which I don't. It's clear to see which one won the Blu-ray, seeing as I have Blu-rays and not HD DVDs. But how did it win? 
Well, for that, we're going to need to take a trip back to the past. In 2002, the Blu-ray Disc Association was formed. Their purpose was to help develop the Blu-ray Disc and create standards for the format. This organization had Sony at the helm, but nine other companies were also working on the project to begin with. The DVD forum was helping with the project and had disagreements about what lasers should be used for the disc. These disagreements finally resulted in the DVD forum leaving the project and creating their own disc known as the HD DVD. After attempts to reunite the sibling formats that were both released separately in 2006, and upon the formats release, there was no immediate winner. But each side had their own pros and cons to them. The Blu-ray disc was backed by companies like Sony, who actually created the disc, the Walt Disney Corporation, Lionsgate, 20th Century Fox, and MGM. They all vowed to exclusively release their films onto the Blu-ray format. Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, Philips, and others all had available systems that used Blu-ray tech on or around launch. Also, the PS3 included the ability to play Blu-rays without any extra add-ons, like how the PS2 before it included the ability to play DVD. HD DVD had Universal, Paramount, Warner Brothers, and New Line backing them exclusively. However, Warner and New Line quickly decided that they would not be loyal to either format, and them, along with Magnolia Pictures and the Weinstein Company, were not loyal towards either format. Toshiba, NEC, Sanyo, Microsoft, and others made systems only for HD DVD. Speaking of Microsoft, they released a $200 add-on for their Xbox 360 game console. This add-on sold roughly 50,000 more units than any other dedicated HD DVD unit as of April of 2007. By 2008, there were very few companies that exclusively supported the HD DVD format. Many were pledging their loyalty towards Blu-ray, citing recent major changes in the market. Toshiba stopped development on the HD DVD format on February 19th of 2008. This officially declared a winner to the format war. Now, there is one last thing I want to talk about. Not any physical format, but the impending end of the very concept of a physical format. In 2007, Netflix, who at the time marketed to a certain demographic of people who wanted to rent movies, but they didn't want to drive to a store. No, they wanted to do it on their computer from the comfort of their own home. How do you do that? Well, you get them shipped by mail. But in 2007, they launched a different service, a different type of membership. One where you didn't even have to have a disc or a VHS tape. One where all you had to have was an internet connection. You would stream a movie just on the internet. This was revolutionary for 2007. And as the years progressed, more and more of these services sprung up. Now it seems like every company under the sun has one of these services, has a sort of membership you pay for, where you can just watch movies unlimited. Where does that leave the physical format? What's going to happen to it? Well, only time will tell. But eventually, I predict, we will see. It's inevitable. And you wanna know something that won't ever end? Football! Yeah! The all-American sport! The all-American dream! Hell yeah! Freedom! America!